YouTubes, we're gonna head out. I got mega ice maker maintenance. I got a three three ice maker maintenance and a walking box maintenance, and we'll break out those new uh, those little tiny gauges from Ellie Tech. Check the app out. Run through it. See how it works. See what it looks like. See if we can input temperatures for subcooling and superheat, and you know, just go through the the basics. Let's get out there. Here we're going to. Uh, I got some keys to unlock some locks. Now I gotta get in there and we'll bring you along to service these ice makers and stuff. Should be pretty good. Let's check it out. So I just got in here, so I got a Hoshisaki right there. I got this Manitowoc. You guys remember this one? This one is the one that came factory overcharged. It's time for some maintenance. Let's see if I had any dates on the filters the last time I did them, and then I got this other Manitowoc up here. Two Manitowocs, a Hoshisaki, and then this giant walking box BM. Wow, January of 22. It's been a while. Wonder what this pre-filter looks like back here for the air. Oh, no pre-filter, just to get into it. It's all right, we can take care of this. We'll get the door open, we'll grab some tools and some goodies and we'll get, we'll get started here. So I always like to see how <laughs> any space in a place becomes storage. We got a tire iron, some bracketing, and a nice rubber mallet for storage up here. Vaughn, Vaughn's good stuff. Remember Vaughn hammers? Um, yeah. Okay. All right, first one up for me. It's not super bad, but definitely needs the scrubber dooski for sure. But not super bad at all. So we're gonna rip this apart and get cracking. Went ahead and pulled the float out. It had some scuzz in there. That one always gets pluggered. This always needs a little to tidy up. Get this out of that. Mm -hmm. Tasty. Is what it is, man. All right, <clears throat> we're going in for it. Wish me luck. Look at this. Wish me luck, everybody. We'll see if we can make some headway with this thing. The pink, the pink ice maker. Sump pan special. Mmm, look at that. Now that is a good one. Has a nice, nice texture to it, nice color. Let's see. Yeah, a little gelatinous. Hmm. The pink. Who doesn't like the pink? All right, this one's cleaning up really good. Uh, I was taking this out and I snapped off one of the uh, the pins snapped off which will happen they're plastic brittle get a stainless steel uh, I got a stainless steel screw with a nut and then another retaining nut and uh, just make sure that it'll slide through freely um, on the bracket 
and you can get yourself a workaround on those. I can't tell you how many times I've snapped those. Sometimes I'll replace it with the new one. I don't have one on the truck and there's nothing wrong with that one. So it's just like a little upgrade. This guy's all tidied up, back to making ice. This one's gonna drop its first batch. It's back together, all cleaned up. Almost done with this one. And then we'll break out the toys and we'll service this walking box and we'll take a look at it. There goes cycling on right there. And uh, we'll see how the uh, those new little tiny Ellie Tech gauges work. It'll be my first time using them. I had ordered some uh, shorter hoses for those. They haven't came in yet. So I'm just gonna run them with my long hoses that I have on there. And uh, we'll play with the app and see how it works and, and check them out. Here's testing out my little hack fix. Solid right back on there. That's NorCal's tip of the day right there. Cause I know that's happened to a bunch of you guys. It happens to me quite a bit too. So that's the fix on that. I have a, a little box of stainless steel hardware on the truck. So it gets me out of a pitch. It sounds like this one's getting ready to harvest. Oh, there it goes right in the harvest. See, specially calibrated ears, super tech. <laughs> All right, there's our evaps. Fans are running low speed because there's no call for cool right now. Um, let's see how dirty these coils are getting. I'll get my ladder, we'll jump up there and, and we'll clean out these coils. Yeah, they need a clean up. Tim Ford. Power's off. Let's see what we're getting into here. <sighs> Basic stuff, we got control fuses. We got our contactor and we have our capacitor for our condenser fan motor. And we have defrost timer. That's pretty much it. And of course the timer's out of time, right? Let's see what we got. Eleven o'clock. So eleven o'clock. there we're set up i got the coil washed on this um i got the evaporators cleaned out and then so next all we got to do is uh we're gonna fire this thing off we'll check the contactor we'll check the capacitor then we'll fire this thing off look at this one 43 pounds 404a that's that's what it took to uh that was the total charge with the uh, headmaster valve on this one. Goosey right there. That's why you gotta do this stuff. Gotta check them. We had one that was Lucy. 
Lucy the Goosey. That one's loose. That one's nice. Loose. Oh man. How close we are to five microfarads. With this one, you can go plus or minus six percent. How's that? Plus or minus six. All right, I'm gonna break break out the Fluke 16 from 2003. Thing still works like a champ. There we go. We'll get it on capacitance. And we're gonna check this. Uh, we're gonna check this capacitor right here. Let's see. We got the LA Rams on one side, blue and yellow. And then of course the shitty ass Cleveland Browns on the other. And we'll see what we get for a reading here. A couple of grabbers, let's see what we got. There it is, 5.14. That is a good capacitor. It's been an awesome meter. 2003 I bought that. Pretty sure that's when I bought it was 03. Or was it 90s? Holy shit. No, this I bought in the 90s, not 03. I bought this in like 93, 1993. That's, you know, industry standard right there, the Fluke. Good stuff. I like that Fluke HVAC meter. Is it the 116? The newer version of this is a really good meter. All right, here it is, the little DMG 4B. Let's go ahead and fire it off. Shannon had a great question. Shannon and I to see if we could see the screen in the sunshine. So let's get this thing out in the sun. And the answer to that is, yeah, you could totally see this thing in the sunshine. I got the sun shining right on it to where it'll just like blind you right there. Look at that. And uh, you could see this thing in the sunshine, no problem. And that's without the backlight on. One thing I do want to try is, um, let's set it over here. I want to, um, I'll go get the GoPro and fire it up. I want to see if, if we change refrigerant on the app, if it changes it right here at the unit as well. And I want to try that. So let's turn this on the Bluetooth. Got the Bluetooth icon flashing. Let me switch over to the app. The app loads up super quick and it loaded up. So you can see on the gauge, it's 134A and it's showing 134A here. So let's hit that. I want to go 448 alpha. I got it checked on here. And then I'm going to go save 448A on the app and it did switch on the unit. That's that's what I was looking for. All right, we can play with that. Um, and I think on the app I'm going to fill in the blanks for the for my uh, temperatures because this doesn't have temperature probe capability. RJ Parker pointed that out, but for uh, self-contained refrigeration, I think that little gate set will be fine. I got uh, T1 here going to the suction line so we can get our compressor superheat, and I got T2 going over for subcooling before the receiver. Um, usually on these commercial refrigeration units, they don't really run a whole lot of subcooling, so. That's just a little heads up there. We'll go ahead and get gauged up. We'll make sure we're zeroed out. Like, see this one's here at minus two. So let's go ahead and hold down the zero button, get it zeroed out. Come on, zero me out. There we go, zeroed out. We're ready to get this thing hooked up and start up. I'm also, uh, at the same time, I'm adjusting my bridge thickness on that ice maker. The other two are dialed. And I'm finishing up that one. It's going to be a crazy day today. I'm going to bring you guys along. I got to go. Uh, I got to do one more ice maker in Santa Cruz. And then the, the owners of that same restaurant have another restaurant in a super fancy part in San Jose called Santana Row. 
and I got to go over there and check the walk-in because she got a quote for a repair. My wife used to work for her and she's all, hey, I really trust Dave. Could you send him out to take a look at the walk-in? It's not working and they had some monster quote. So I'll do that for them. I'll go check it out. Um, it's going to end up being a long day. So I'll bring you guys along. We'll make a video out of it. We'll have some fun and we're getting it together. Now this one cleaned up super good. My last, my last patch was a little too thick for my liking, so I'm just getting it, just trying to get it dialed. We got 145 on the high side, 74 on the low. That's also the same on the little manifold. Uh, probably what I'll do is I'll film some screenshots because it'll look better on the video than me filming it with the GoPro. And I'm almost ready to fire this up. We'll restore power to our unit. Let her run for a minute. Here's our app, it's like real time app. So that's showing our pressure, our evap temperature, and I think it's going to let me input. My line tips to get my superheat and my sub cooling, which let's let it run for a bit. It is, they're coming around. And I don't think it's gonna run for a long time on that box, so yeah, 59.5, 59.3. You can see how low the condensing is. Uh, that coil was wet too because I had washed the coil out also. So it's a little askew at the moment. Twenty-three point two. Let's do this. We'll get film some screenshots. All right, let's try this. We'll type in fifty-five point nine right here. See if it'll let us. 55.9, okay. That gives me a superheat of 32.7, and on the subcool, 69 degrees. That's showing 13.6 subcooling. I do that coil's wet as a drum. Um, that's why my head pressure's low. But, yeah, the app's not bad. These little buggers, they're doing it 44 over 83. They both read the same. Just for some quick readings. Not two shabbins. Let's readjust our superheat. 53 degrees. 53 degrees, let's try it. 53.0. Right in the wheelhouse at 31.6 minimum compressor superheat I'm looking for is 20 so I'm good there I'm dropping the liquid line went up to 70 that makes sense 70.0 okay there we go Two. I mean it's really not that that much of a pain in the ass to input the temperatures but it would be nice if it had real-time calculations impressed with the app so far not bad 20.5 degree evaporator I know that things approach and set point here pretty close you can see my head pressure finally started coming up because that coils drying out 191. Let's see here. We're at 73 now. 73.0. Okay. Fifty-one point two. Fifty-one point two. Okay. Yeah, 30.7. Superheat at the compressor.
still at a 20.5 evap temp. This is easy on the ice for me. I like the layout of this of this little app. So here, 74.8. Yeah, it's falling more in line now that the coil's drying out. There we go, 75. Point zero. 50.5, let's here we go, 50.5. Yeah, you can see our liquid line starting to warm up now. There we go, 76.1. This is all things you have to take in consideration when you're doing maintenance. Like, you know, you restart the unit, the coil's wet, you get some weird readings until it dries out and settles back down. Let's see, suction line now is at 50.5. Let's see here, oh yeah. I think that's what we were at, so it's starting to settle in pretty good. Seventy-six point nine, seventy-six point nine. Yeah, there we go, 9.8 subcooling. 77.3. Yep, 777. Just easy to work with little app. Super basic right there. You get your pressures and your temperatures. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. We're off. We're at 10 on the low side. We're all pumped down and at set point looking good. Be careful of that fan while you take off your clamps. We're looking good. This is a, that was a good little maiden voyage for the little Ellie Tech DMG 4-B or DMG 4B. Not too shabby. 87 bucks on eBay. I don't know how they're going to last up. Let's let's run them through the ringer today and see if we can beat the crap out of them. It's dead nuts noon. Uh, let's go back to Santa Cruz. Yeah, it's, the fog's burned off. Let's get back to Santa Cruz. I got to do this other ice maker, and then I got to go over the hill and check a walking box. So let's do that. We're out there. Finished the job downtown Santa Cruz. Now we got to head over the hill and see why this walking box isn't working and they got a quote for four grand to fix it so we'll have to see what it is Melrose Place of the Silicon feet, Valley. Turn right onto Tatum Lane. Yeah, I want Tatum. Supposedly at Tatum, there's a garage I can park in that takes me to the back of the kitchen. This is like, this is like ridiculous. It's like the Beverly Hills of the Silicon Valley right here. Sports turn cars, right sports onto cars. Tatum Lane, then turn left onto Piazza de Valencia. Yeah. Nuts. 
NorCal Dave, what have you gotten yourself into? All I know is the Vangina is cruising the strip right now. And we're gonna go look at a broken walking box. All right, here we go. That's the garage I wanna get into right there on the left. Turn left onto Piazza de Valencia. Then your destination will be on the left. That's what Servando said. He said to go in there and park by the trash cans. That's what he told He told me to come in here and park by the trash cans. Let's see if I can pull this off. All right, I think I found it. Drop top unit, capsule pack, hot tamales. Oh yeah, the beer's got ice on them. Thermostat, coil. Sounds terrible up there. some ventilation. I had to grab a ladder and then I got to talk to those maintenance dudes to make sure it's all right to have my truck there for a minute. All right, I got the green light to hang out here for like 15 minutes, 15, 30 minutes to, uh, I can park right here. We'll make it happen for a quick diagnostics. I'll we'll grab Tippos. He fell over. I just picked him back up. Knee pads, some gloves. We'll go with some set of gauges and we'll check this out. All right, I got my bearings. This is the glycol chiller for the beer lines. That's the uh, condensing unit for the walk-in. Let me get this lid off. Looks like it's low on charge to me. Compressor's running, condenser fan's running. It's low on charge. See that? So let me, she got a quote for four grand, 2003. Let me see what refrigerant this is. This is Masterbuilt R22. So we could go 448A in there. I could recover what's left and then recharge it with 448. It's probably got a leak in the evaporator. That's what I'd be thinking. I love how these guys do this, you know? No disconnect at the unit that I can see. I see the conduit goes back that way. It'd be nice if you could turn it off right here. Yeah, there is, there's a switch right there. All right, very good, very good. Okay. Now what I'd like to do is take a look. Take a look at the evap. I don't see any oil up here, like a, a big leak, but I would like to take a look at that, uh, at the um, evaporator coil. The train probably got chilled water going to it for cooling. No duct right here. Got a big old return, yeah, it's big old return. So they're trying to pull heat, trying to pull heat out of the attic into here through a cooling coil. I love it. I love seeing stuff like this. That's, you know, that's, that's kind of stuff I work on at the day job. Right, right when I walked in, it went off. Look at that. Gonna burn my heater up. Got a leaky evaporator coil. So yeah, four grand for an evaporator change out. That's not bad. That's not a bad price at all. Um, especially for the Bay Area. What I'm gonna do though, I'm gonna see if I can get this thing going for them. It's Saturday. They need it for the weekend. So recover what's left and then charge it with 448 to get them through the weekend. And I'll tell her to go ahead and get this coil changed out. <laughs> you like that one? <laughs> oh, making smiles everywhere we go. I love it. I love it. I love it. That was awesome. They let me park in here and save my day. Oh, brother. I don't work over here. This is an absolute favor for uh, my wife's old boss. Whew. 
Let's get out of here. Snapple, yapple, dapple on. All right, that was that was a good one. I usually don't come over here to work, man. This is uh, I usually stick it in Santa Cruz on the island, but that was nuts. But I don't think if she got a quote for four grand to change out the evaporator coil, I don't think that's too egregious in there where that location is at all. You can have two guys in there working all day, plus the parts dryer txv thermostat all that that's not a bad price i told her i'm not i don't i don't have time to come over here and do it with the day job and i think the price she got would probably be just fine for over there but i got the thing going for them for the weekend because they're going to try and sell a ton of beers this weekend so at least the kid cooler will, it'll be cool for the weekend going into next week and then they can figure out what they want to do and that's that for that one. Let's go get stuck in traffic on the way home. Let's do it. It's now three o'clock. Three o'clock in the afternoon. We're rolling. Mundana. Mundana. <laughs> you like that one? <laughs> oh, making smiles everywhere we go. I love it. I love it. I love it. That was awesome.